Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So the video that I have for you guys today is one that I definitely think has the potential to be solved and I do genuinely think that we will see this case be solved but I do think that it needs a lot more attention. More needs to be done to let those involved know that we still care and we will not let Samantha be forgotten. But before we get into today's case, I just wanted to go ahead and say a big thank you to today's sponsor, NordPass. I've been using NordPass for over a year at this point and all I can say is that I absolutely love their service. NordPass is a password security service where security meets simplicity. NordPass is powered by the cybersecurity professionals who built NordVPN, the online security app that is used worldwide. NordPass allows you to store all of your passwords in one secure place, all of which you can access with one master password. So instead of remembering a million different passwords for every different website, NordPass makes it so you only have to remember one. NordPass helps you autofill very secure passwords. It can recognize suspicious websites so that you can stay safe while browsing online so that you don't accidentally reveal your personal information to the wrong people. And my favorite part is that it can help you shop online with ease. NordPass can help you create accounts such as Amazon accounts and create a complex password for it so that it's impossible for hackers to guess your password. And then it remembers your passwords so that you don't have to worry about remembering it yourself. It's very user-friendly and very easy to learn how to use, which is amazing because I have a very hard time learning technology and different apps. It absolutely drives me crazy every time there's an update to an app I already use because it takes me so long to figure out how to use it, but with NordPass, they make it super easy. NordPass has both desktop and mobile-friendly apps, which are not offered by password managers that are pre-installed into your phone. One of my favorite new features is the data breach scanner, where it helps you find out if any of your online account information or credit card information has been leaked. This is so helpful and makes me feel very safe, especially with how much most of us shop online these days. It can be so easy for hackers to get your credit card information or your account information if you're shopping online. Putting all your credit card information into all these different websites, some of which may or may not be the most trustworthy, and then on top of that, especially if you're shopping on public Wi-Fi, it can be even easier for hackers to guess your account information. The best part about the service is how affordable it is. You literally get an entire month's worth for less than the cost of your daily Starbucks coffee. There is an end of winter sale where my subscribers can get 70% off of NordPass plus an additional month for free when you click the link down below and use code Rachel. It's never been easier or more cost effective to keep all of your passwords and accounts safe and it can save you a huge headache in the future. So again, make sure you go ahead and click the link down below and use code Rachel to get 70% off of NordPass plus an extra month for free. Thank you again to NordPass for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so with all of that being said, let's get into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the unsolved disappearance of Samantha Sperry. Samantha Sperry was 25 years old when she disappeared. She was described as being hard-headed and stubborn, yet incredibly loving and affectionate towards those she cared about. She was born in Murray, Kentucky, and she pretty much spent her whole life there. She had been married to a man named Jacob Sperry and had two children, but the two had actually recently separated shortly before her disappearance. Now, Samantha had actually struggled with addiction in her teens and had been clean for about six years before she actually relapsed shortly before she went missing. This could have something to do with the man that she had recently started seeing after she separated from her husband, but that's just kind of a guess and we really have no way of knowing. But she had started dating a 30-year-old man named Ren Hendrickson. Now, according to Samantha's sister Kim, Ren and his family didn't have the best reputation around town. He was a drug dealer, he was abusive towards women, and he was a thief. This is all according to Samantha's sister, but it's safe to say that Samantha's family and her sister didn't really like or approve of this guy. Now, in order to understand how Samantha's case had played out, we need to talk about the area where she and her boyfriend lived. They lived in Graves County, Kentucky, which is a very rural area and is heavily forested and frequented by deer hunters, outdoorsmen, and just country people who are comfortable with being in the elements. It's the type of place where if you aren't from the area, it's very easy to get lost, 
while the people who have been there their whole lives can navigate it better than anybody else. Now, the timeline of events for when Samantha went missing are a little bit unclear because we pretty much only have statements from the men who were allegedly on meth, but who overall just can't really be seen as credible sources. I do have some information from Samantha's sister, but again, there's just not much there, and even that information pretty much comes from the men that she was with. But I will do my best to give the most accurate timeline that I can. Even the day that she went missing has been reported differently depending on the source that you look at. It's either been March 27th or the 28th, but most sources do say the 27th, so that is the day that I'm going to use. So the evening of Wednesday, March 27th, 2018 started as a pretty normal evening, just a couple of adults hanging out and having some fun. Samantha and her boyfriend, Ren, were hanging out when they decided to go over to Ren's father's house, Dusty Holder, to go and visit him on the 4200 block of Tim Road in Graves County, Kentucky. However, according to Dusty, Samantha and Ren had actually started arguing, so Ren left by himself, driving Samantha's car to go over to Samantha's house to spend the night there by himself. But according to Ren, the two had not gotten into an argument. Now, I don't think Ren lived at Samantha's house, and I don't know for sure why Ren just decided to leave Samantha at his father's house by herself, but both Ren and Dusty did say that the reason Ren left and Samantha stayed was because Samantha and Dusty wanted to ride some ATVs in his backyard and Ren just didn't want to. So Samantha and Dusty rode some four-wheelers in the wooded area behind his house, but eventually the two had gotten lost and their ATVs got stuck in the mud. Dusty said that instead of going back to his house after they had gotten stuck, the two had just decided to stay out in the woods with the four-wheelers. Again, not exactly sure why they did this or how far out from the house they actually got. I couldn't really find out anywhere how far from the house they were or how deep in the woods they were. He said that they kept the ATVs running all night in order to keep them warm until the ATVs did eventually run out of gas and the two had just pretty much spent the night in the woods. That next morning, the two started walking around the woods to try and find their way out and they did eventually get out of the woods at Kaler Bottoms by the bridge near Highway 130 and Highway 849. So Dusty suggested that they go to the Kaler Mart, a convenience store down the road for some help to warm up and to get some food. The two were just cold, wet, and tired, and they were absolutely covered in mud but Samantha said no, that she could just go ahead and walk to a relative's house who lived nearby. So this relative apparently lived in the opposite direction as the store, so they went their separate ways. So Samantha started heading south on Highway 131 as Dusty went north. This is the last time that Dusty says that he saw Samantha. So Dusty did end up going to the Kaler Mart by himself. Witnesses did see him there and they did say that he was cold, wet, and dirty. But according to witnesses, Dusty made no mention of Samantha at any point. So then that same evening, around 7 p.m., now March 28th, Ren went back to his father Dusty's house, still driving Samantha's car. Ren had said that he had been trying to get a hold of Samantha all day, but she wasn't responding to any of his texts or calls. So Dusty went ahead and told him everything that had happened that night and Ren absolutely freaked out when he heard all of this and he immediately FaceTimed his mother. He basically explained the whole thing to his mother saying that Samantha had disappeared and he said that he thinks that his dad did something horrible to Samantha. He basically explained this entire thing that he just heard to his mother saying that Samantha had disappeared and that he thinks that his father has something to do with Samantha disappearing. He thinks that his father did something horrible to Samantha. So he told his mom that he had just taken a bunch of pills and was going to go out in the middle of the woods to die. So he drove Samantha's car about a half mile before parking it on the side of the road to walk into the woods alone. By 7.20 p.m., 911 received a frantic call from Ren's mother telling them that her son was going into the woods trying to take his own life. However, it was the evening and it was dark outside, so at that point, police said that they were not going to be going out and searching for Ren. This was because they saw him as an armed and dangerous person and didn't want to search for him in the dark. He did have quite a few run-ins with police beforehand. There apparently was one incident of an active shooter situation that police were still investigating that Ren had potentially been involved with. They said that if they did have to go search that night that they would have had to have gotten volunteers involved and they didn't want to put a bunch of unarmed civilians at 
risk when they were searching for him. So they opted not to search for him until the daytime because to them, he was a very dangerous person and it just was not worth it. So that same evening, Samantha had a shift for work at McDonald's scheduled for 9 p.m., but of course, she did not show up. She definitely was not known to be someone to just no call, no show for work. Plus her family had been trying to get a hold of her all day and no one got any response from her. So when her family found out about her just not showing up to work, they immediately called police to report her missing. However, as you probably expected, police did not take her disappearance seriously at all at first. Sheriff Redman claimed that she was a meth user, so she had probably just walked away for a while to do drugs and that she would be back shortly and that there was absolutely nothing to worry about. Because somehow police think that they know more about a missing woman and what she may be up to than her own family who know her and see her every single day, but that's besides the point. I also do want to mention that at some point after the family reported Samantha missing, Dusty also called police to report her missing as well. So by that next morning, March 29th, police did decide to go out to the Kaler Bottoms area to search around the woods for both Ren and Samantha after speaking to Dusty who said that Ren and Samantha were together when Ren went missing. Immediately, they found Samantha's Ford Taurus abandoned at the intersection of Highway 131 and Dooms Chapel Road, south of some Sonia, Kentucky. They took the car in and searched it for any evidence. That same day, police had asked an unnamed volunteer to search around the area and report back with what he found. Now, this individual was very familiar with the area because he was raised in the area and he spent a lot of time in the woods. So he was a very trusted individual to police. So they trusted him to go out and search the area and come back with whatever he found. So he pretty quickly found the four-wheeler in the woods, stuck in the mud, out of gas, just like Dusty had said. Next to the ATVs, he found the keys to Samantha's car laying on the ground. They had also found a fire pit nearby that had two burned cell phones in it, both of which ended up belonging to Dusty. Then he also noticed that there was only one set of footprints around the four-wheeler leading out of the woods. Obviously, this pretty much completely contradicted the story that Dusty had been telling to police this whole time. So police went ahead and asked Dusty to come to the police station for an interview. During the interview, Dusty maintained his story and said that when the two started walking out of the woods, Samantha had headed south on Highway 131 while he headed north. Now I also want to remind you that through this initial part of the investigation, Ren was still nowhere to be found. But then on April 1st, a group of volunteers went out into the woods to search some more for Samantha. That same night, Ren had actually come out of the woods and went to Dusty's house asking for help. He said that he had been in the woods for five days and he clearly looked very disheveled, he was hypothermic, and he was very dehydrated. He was taken into the hospital that night and into the police station the next morning. So of course, police asked Ren what happened when he went into the woods and why he was out there for five days all by himself. Ren said that he had actually taken some of Samantha's items out into the woods with him, but that he lost these items while he was out in the woods. But other than this, we have no idea what else was said in the interview. It hasn't been released, so we have absolutely no idea why he said he was in the woods for five days by himself and why he eventually came out or what even happened while he was in the woods. However, I did see in one source that both Dusty and Ren took a polygraph test and both of them passed, but I did only find this in one source. No other source really mentioned this, so take that with what you will. I also do want to note that even though Dusty Dusty said that Samantha was going to see a relative who lived nearby, and there was actually a relative that lived nearby. From the point that he said that they were, she would have actually had to have walked north on Highway 131 to get to that house. But, like we heard him say earlier, for some reason, she decided to walk south. Just another weird inconsistency with the story. Plus, the highway that they were walking on is pretty busy and no one has ever come forward to say that they saw Samantha walking on that road. 
this would have been at around 7 a.m so just as rush hour is starting so if she really was walking on the side of the road i feel like at least someone would have seen her and when you know her name was in the news and they were starting to report her disappearance someone would have come forward to say that they saw her walking on the side of the road now of course i know a lot of you are wondering about samantha's ex-husband jacob police did look at him and they did do an interview with him but they didn't really get anything significant out of these interviews and they don't have any reason to believe that he's suspicious. So for now, he's not really someone that they're looking at, but of course he should always be considered when we're talking about a disappearance that's not solved yet. Police had also executed search warrants on both Samantha's and Dusty's homes. They had removed several items from both homes, but police said that they did not find anything significant. Now, there was some blood found in an undisclosed area of Samantha's this home and it was sent off for testing but I haven't seen if they've gotten the results back for that yet or if anything came of these results. It has not been reported, so I don't know if they just don't have the results or if they're just not telling us what they were. I do also want to note that according to Kim, Samantha's sister, Samantha did leave her cell phone at home and she did not take it with her. As for the items that Ren had said that he brought into the woods and then lost, police did go search for these items. Now, I've seen in some sources that these items were never found, but I did see in some other sources that these items were found, but they didn't really help the case much and they weren't very significant. I also want to note that police never revealed what these items even were. So again, just something else that police have not released that we really don't know the significance of. Police also said that the FBI had contacted them asking them if they needed help with the investigation and they did accept the help. So the FBI reviewed the case, but they apparently said that there was nothing else that the FBI could help them with, that they were pretty much doing everything that the FBI would do. So for now, they didn't really need their help, but if they ever did need their help later on, they could give them a call. The searches continued in the following months, and according to police, they utilized numerous volunteers, cadaver dogs, helicopters, and did plenty of grid searches. By 2019, a search was being conducted in the area of Bell Road and Dooms Chapel by police and a canine team. As they were searching, they'd actually come across an underground bunker that had been dug out and lived in, and inside the bunker, they'd actually found someone living in it. The man was identified as 41-year-old Ernest Hendrickson. Ernest had multiple charges, including manufacturing and possessing meth, fleeing or evading police, possession of a firearm by a felon, among other charges. He had gone to jail for these charges, but he was paroled in 2018. However, he was supposed to go to drug treatment, but he never went. He never reported to his parole officer, and he had been using both meth and marijuana, which was also against his parole. An arrest warrant was issued for him in November of 2018, and police had tried searching for him at a relative's house, which, if you haven't gathered yet, he is a relative of Ren Hendrickson and Dusty Holder. And this bunker was found in the same woods that Samantha went missing from right by Dusty's house. Along with Ernest, Ernest and the bunker, they had also found large quantities of meth and other drug-related items hidden in the woods. Now, obviously, this relates to Samantha's case because Ernest is a family member of both Dusty and Wren, but it also brings up the question of whether Wren had been using this bunker when he was lost in the woods for those five days, or if Dusty had used one when he was supposedly spending the night in the woods with Samantha. It also makes you wonder what other kind of holes and hidden things they have in those woods woods, where else they may be hiding things or what else they may be hiding. These men know these woods like the backs of their hands even better than police, so there's no telling what else could be hidden out there. So after all of this, police had said that they had been working with the FBI and following up on numerous different leads, but they still don't have anybody behind bars. They obviously do have people who they believe are involved, but they said that they aren't ruling anything out. They said that they are keeping a lot of information out of the public to keep the integrity of the investigation. And I imagine that there's a lot more information behind the scenes that they aren't telling us, so who knows what else could be at play. So now let's get into the main theories in this case. 
With these theories, there really are two, maybe three main ideas. The first theory, which is the less likely theory in my opinion, is that everything that Dusty said happened pretty much exactly the way that he said and the two went their separate ways and she got lost and she couldn't find her way out of the woods and she succumbed to the elements and was just never found. Really, the only actual thing pointing towards this theory is Dusty's word. Now, I guess the other thing that you can technically point too is that she did recently relapse on drugs. She was clean for six years and then relapsed right before she went missing. One could argue that maybe she was back on drugs and these drugs made her act very out of character and then she went wandering around the woods when she was on these drugs and then whenever she eventually sobered up at some point she realized that she was lost but she was so deep in the woods that she didn't know how to find her way out so she succumbed to the elements that way. There's also another element to this this thought that we know that many times when people who do drugs, when they relapse after being clean for so long, they do the same amount of drugs that they did when they had a higher tolerance, which ends up causing them to overdose because they just don't have that same tolerance anymore. So it could be possible that she was doing drugs and was doing the same amounts that she previously had been and then ended up ODing and then died in the woods because of that. So to me, that's pretty much all that's pointing towards her just going off and going missing and never being found. However, as far as I've seen, through all of the searches that have been done, they haven't really found anything in the woods besides what Wren had admitted to bringing out there and losing and those ATVs that they had been using that night. Of course, you could always make the argument that it's just a tough area to search and that's why nothing was ever found, but other than that, I really don't think there's anything else pointing towards this theory. So now going along with this theory is that maybe she purposely took her own life in the woods, but I don't really want to spend too much time on this theory because I just don't think it's very likely. She had two children who she absolutely loved and adored. Yes, she was battling her own demons, but her family does not think that she took her own life. She showed absolutely no signs and her family members are the ones who know her best. So if they don't think she took her life, I don't think that she did. Plus, when we consider all of the other sketchy things that happened in this case that point just directly away from that, that really makes me think that this theory just is not possible. It would have to be the world's biggest coincidence for all of these things to just happen on the same night that she chose to take her own life. I just don't think that that's really what happened. So that brings me into my next theory, which I think is the most obvious and the most likely theory is that Dusty and Ren harmed Samantha. First of all, we know that they were together that night. We know that the story that Dusty told police was just riddled with inconsistencies. Everything surrounding that night points directly towards him. I also want to bring up that burn pile with two phones that both happen to belong to Dusty. Normal people don't just have two phones unless they're involved in something sketchy. Plus, why would you burn your phone for any reason except that there was something on it that you were trying to hide? All of that obviously is incredibly suspicious. Now, I will concede that there isn't any physical evidence pointing directly towards him, and to me, that's probably why he isn't behind bars. They only have circumstantial evidence pointing towards him, which is really just so frustrating. We also know that both him and Ren may have passed a polygraph test, but again, that was only in one source. So take that with a grain of salt. I don't know if that's true or not. But either way, even if we do say that that source is completely accurate and they did both pass a polygraph test, we know that polygraph tests aren't always the most accurate. So obviously everything else sketchy that happened in this case just cannot be ignored. I do have a couple ideas of what I think could have possibly happened that night, who knows what, and why I think it played out the way it did. So first of all, I do think that Ren knows exactly exactly what happened. I think that that is why he freaked out the way he did and called his mom. Maybe Dusty told him what he did to his girlfriend and he freaked out. Or the other thought that I have is maybe Ren was actually with both of them the whole time and both Ren and Dusty hurt her while they were all high on drugs. Maybe at the time they were all really high and they didn't exactly realize what they were doing or whatever and then he realized what he did the next day 
and then he felt incredibly guilty and that's when he called his mom. I feel like the only reason that someone would freak out the way he did and want to take his own life is if he knew something huge. I don't think that he would have reacted that way if Dusty simply told him that she just walked off. The other thing that we have to discuss is what may have happened. So I think that maybe the three of them were on drugs like I just mentioned. Maybe they were all hanging out when a huge argument broke out. Then at some point, one of them or both of them harmed Samantha either in the woods or in the house. Then I think Dusty told Ren to go to Samantha's house while he got rid of her body. I think we see this situation a lot where maybe Ren had hurt her and then Dusty being his father was like, okay, calm down, go somewhere else, I'll take care of it. Then Ren came back the next day, realized what happened, felt guilty, and then wanted to go take his own life because he couldn't live with the guilt. Or the other idea is that maybe, again, he felt guilty and then tried to find where his father hid her body and that's why he was out in the woods for so many days. Dusty may have known that Ren was not very stable, so he wouldn't want him to know where he hid Samantha's body so that there was no way that he could come out and later confess and then show police where her body was. The other idea going along with them using drugs is that maybe they gave her some sort of drugs that were laced with something and then she ended up overdosing and then they hid her body because they know that they can get in trouble for giving her something that was laced. Or maybe she overdosed and it wasn't necessarily their fault but they sell meth. We know that they have previous charges and we know that they found meth in the woods. So maybe they didn't even consider the fact that she overdosed and would get in trouble for that. Maybe they were more worried about just getting caught dealing in general and they didn't want to lose all the money they were making or they didn't want to lose this business that they had and they knew that them finding her would get them in trouble. So they just hid her to cover up their sketchy dealings. The other idea about what had happened that night is that maybe Ren actually did go to Samantha's house because Samantha and Dusty wanted to keep riding ATVs. Maybe as they were riding ATVs, Dusty made a move on her and then Samantha rejected him and in a rage he harmed her. I also think that that's totally possible. I definitely think that if Dusty had told Ren that he tried making advances on his girlfriend and then it killed her out of rage because she rejected him, I can definitely see how Ren would freak out to the point that he would want to take his own life because he felt so horrible. So we have all of those ideas of why and how he may have ended up harming her. I think after either one of them harmed her, I think that is when they loaded her body onto the ATV and that is how they transported her body. I think he went and then hid her body somewhere in the woods and she's just never been found. I also want to point out that she went missing in March of 2018 and there were many searches done with dogs and horses and helicopters and many volunteers. They didn't find that bunker until over a year later in August of 2018. 2019, which clearly means that this bunker is very well hidden. So clearly this family is very familiar with the woods and they know how to hide things. So to me, it definitely makes it seem that it's not impossible to just hide her body so well in these woods that she's just never been found. Plus the weather conditions had caused a lot of problems with searching from the very beginning from snowing and flooding and everything like that. This can also mess with her body or her remains and make it even harder to find her wherever she's hidden. So that is pretty much how I think everything happened. I think that both Dusty and Ren know exactly what happened and I think that both of them are involved. I personally just don't think that police have enough evidence to take both of them in and charge them with anything. So unfortunately for now, all of this is just a theory until we know more. As of right now, both Ren and Dusty are in jail due to drug charges, but as of right now, no charges have been brought against either one of them in relation to Samantha. So as of right now, it's just about spreading awareness and getting eyes on Samantha's case. Somebody knows something and it just takes someone coming forward with what they know. We need more pressure on those involved in her case and we just need to get Samantha and her family some justice. Samantha's sister Kim runs a Facebook to share as much up-to-date information about her sister's case as she can, so I highly suggest you go ahead and check out that page if you want to keep up with Samantha's case. It has all of the contact information and has everything surrounding her disappearance if you want more information or if you want 
want to find out who to contact, I will also put those details down below. For now, please just think about Samantha's children and what they must be going through. They keep asking for their mom and no one can even tell them why she hasn't come home yet. So I just ask that you share Samantha's story wherever you can and make those responsible pay for what they did to her. So that is all of the information I have on today's case and now I really am looking forward to hearing what you guys think. Do you think that Samantha just got lost? Do you think that Ren and Dusty are responsible? And if so, how do you think all of it went down? Or do you have any other ideas of what may have happened to Samantha? Please let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Make sure you go ahead and click the link down below and head over to NordPass for 70% off of NordPass plus an extra month for free. Don't forget to go ahead and follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and send them over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. Every single case that I cover here on this channel comes directly from that email, so make sure to go ahead and send those suggestions over. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!